man, it's kind of late here because I'm it's past my bedtime. So what's, <laughs> so what's happening? Welcome, Mike Stern, to the Voodoo Room. Every musician has a relationship with their instrument. How has your relationship with your guitar changed over the years? And what's your relationship with it like right now? Well, I mean, I, I love to play the guitar. I've been playing since I was 12 years old. So I, the music has changed, not so much my, you know, I always love to play the guitar, but the music around it has changed that I use. You know, sometimes uh, at first I was playing more rock and blues, and then I really fell in love with jazz, which to me includes everything in some ways, because you can combine it with so many things. But the vocabulary of, of really traditional jazz is what I'm always after. And then, then I'll maybe write a tune that rocks a little bit more. It's funky. But, uh, but you know, just getting a chance to play with the people that I played with uh, who are great jazz players, but they also do other kinds of influences in, in the music. And they play straight down the middle jazz, too, really straight ahead, like Michael Brecker or Randy Brecker or Jocko Pastorius or, or of course, Miles. You know, uh, so all those people that I've gotten a chance to play with and I'm totally grateful all the time to, to gotten to do that. Um, uh, you know, they're, they're also very wide open, kind of very open minded and always, always will, you know, always work. And, uh, and, and, you know, a couple of them aren't around anymore, but they'll live on forever because they made such great music, you know. Uh, but, but so, so, uh, Relationship with the guitar has been constant. I love to play, <laughs> yeah, no matter what. I know. And and how have you been coping during this period of time, you know, where you haven't rough. been... It's, it's rough. Yeah. I mean, I've been teaching on Zoom mm. all the time. Yeah. So uh, constantly. So kind of Monday through Friday, regular. So that's been really good, yeah. just to, to, to do some stuff. But, um, but, uh, but of course, I miss playing. Yeah, totally. In 2016, you had an accident and suffered some serious injuries to your shoulders and in particular your right arm, which meant that you had to modify your playing technique. What was it like to have to reinvent the way you play music? It wasn't totally reinvented, but enough so that it's, a, it's a difficult. It's definitely a challenge. But, you know, you just keep going. If you love it enough, you'll find a way. Yeah. So sometimes I have to use, actually use a, a glue to hold the pick. Yes. And, but I've been, you know, I was gigging like three months after the accident. There were some gigs I didn't want to give up. And <laughs> those were really tricky. But uh, but after a while, I got more used to, uh, you know, doing what I'm, how I normally play. There was enough of that that kind of came back. So there's still some uh, adjustments. But I just, you know, you just got to keep plowing through. I mean, you get sponsorship for your picks, right? Because you go through quite a lot of picks, if I recall. I go through a lot of them, a lot of yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> now that I have to glue them. So, so uh, but I, I definitely do. I got Dario. Yeah. They're great. They're yeah. Strings, picks, chords, they're amazing. They're yeah. really great. And it's really good stuff. I would buy it anyway if I didn't get it from them, you know. So they're, they've been fantastic. Awesome, man. When you're up there playing and you feel the most connected with your audience. What's, what is the conversation like? What are you saying to them generally? Well, just, uh, you know, you want to try to project basically kind of, I always like to project like whatever the music is. If it's a ballad, you really want that to get across and hopefully people will really feel that in their heart. If it's something exciting, you want them to rock with you, you know? If, if it's, uh, you know, a fast tune or a fast up-tempo jazz tune or, or funk tune or something, uh, you want them to feel that. Um, but but generally, I also like to just have have it to be a kind of a warm vibe, you know, like inclusive. Like everybody's welcome and I really hope you enjoy the music and, you know, this is straight from the heart and it's all good vibes as much as we can make it that way. And sometimes that's real difficult if you're jet lagged, if you're half asleep, you know, and you're trying to, but music wakes your ass up, you know, <laughs> if you focus on it, you're there, no matter what. And uh, so, so, yes. Yeah, well, I always, I well, I know the uh, last time you came to Melbourne, um, well, I think it was the last time you came to Melbourne, uh, you played with Jeff Lorber and, um, yeah. You know, you play some great tunes, and one of the ones that I like is Jones Street. I think that's a terrific track. 
Yeah, that was fun. That, that, that's that was fun to record with him too. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's got a lot of energy um, in the track. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks. The best-selling jazz album of all time is Miles Davis' Some Kind of Blue, has sold a tick over 5 million copies. So jazz doesn't sell many records overall as other genres of music, but what does jazz do better than other genres of music? I don't know if it's a better or whatever, but I, I know that some of it is still around uh, just as strong as it always was, kind of. And it's, and it's, it's like... A kind of a, uh, I guess, I mean, to, you know, one c comparison could be, and these are all ne never as good as, you know, you just can't make direct comparisons, but it's kind of like poetry in some ways, as opposed to like a great detective novel that will sell off the, off the, you know, right away off the charts, you know, but you wouldn't necessarily retain it for your entire life and sometimes a poem will hit you and you'll 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 be remembering certain phrases forever you know that kind of thing so sometimes it's like that a lot of times it's just it, it feels great and it's just like any other music which is which and a lot of there's all kinds of great music um you know that's i'm not a, a, a you know i love jazz that's probably what i like to you know, that's what I really kind of concentrate on the most, is, is really studying that music and, and, and playing it, and I love it. But um, but like I say, I combine it with different things that I also really dig, you know, and maybe not as, as uh, intent, uh, you know, I'm more, more energy directly towards jazz, I think, than anything else that I've actually really spent time on, you know, and learning. But, but I certainly love a lot of kinds of music, and uh, um, but maybe not quite the same, the same amount, kind of. And uh, and there's something about jazz that sometimes, when, when you really get it, it really hooks you, and it's deep. It's deep. It just really gets you in, in a great way. So, uh, but it's it's you know I think it's like anything else. Sometimes the more uh, deep stuff is, it's a little less accessible for a short period of time kind of thing. You kind of got to understand it to a point. But I think that basically happens when you think of the entire world of jazz, including electric jazz, including all that stuff. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff out there that's, that's done well, you know? And, uh, and, and, and people listen to a lot. And nowadays, who knows, because because they, no one's selling that many records anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> it may be all like we're all tied. Who knows? You know, I don't do you think know. we'll but, ever uh, see? Do you think we'll ever see a jazz album sell more than five million copies sometime in the near knows. future? Yeah, who knows? You never know. Yeah. But uh, uh, you know, maybe jazz singers have. That's a whole other thing that you're, you're talking about jazz instrumental. But mm. you know, Frank Sinatra probably oh, yeah. sells more. You know, that's totally. up there with the, with everybody. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, and that's a that's definitely the world of jazz. He phrased Miles used to say he used to check him out for his phrasing, mm. he lay back and in the time when he sang. Mm. So you yeah. know, but anyway, it's all good. I you know who knows. That's it. All I know is I love to play, and I hope the basement stays open, and I hope Bird's basement stays open. I hope Al Bears listen. <laughs> I, want I want it to still happen. We've had some great times there. Totally, man. Um, you've helped inspire a generation of guitarists, but one of the great things about music is you don't have to be Mike Stern, i.e. one of the world's best, to inspire someone to pick up the guitar. So what advice would you give to other experienced musicians who are looking for ways to give back? How have you done it and what can others do? Teaching is a good one, I think, is a great one. Just just the teaching, and then you you kind of teach somebody about how to maybe how to listen to something, or or if they're guitar players, you, you give them guitar lessons. And I've done a lot of that. I love it. You know, it's it's really fun because people get into it, and it really uh, you know sometimes even beginners, and you can see them really getting into it. You know, and, and struggling here and there, but really staying with it. It's it's beautiful. You know, and it, it's and they love it. Mm. So that's that's really 
that's something that comes back to you. Beautiful, man. So yeah. what advice would you give a young Mike Stern? Oh, boy. You mean, <laughs> could, I, could, I, could I do things over? <laughs> well, I would do th certain things a lot less, you know, <laughs> that I used to do in the past. <laughs> there were some years there that are hard to remember for obvious reasons. <laughs> but um, so I would probably be less uh, inclined to overindulge. But I, you know, it's been years that I haven't had that uh, difficulty for over 30, almost 40 years now. I've been totally cooled out in terms of that. And that, uh, it's a lot more energy. You got a lot more energy, a lot more positive stuff going. So I would say anybody that wants to get too much drinking, too much whatever, uh, <laughs> can get into anybody's way, whether a musician or yeah. not. Musicians and, and artists, I think, have a, have a certain kind of maybe a little bit more hypersensitivity towards things. So maybe they try to deaden it yeah. a little bit more. That's why you get that a lot of times from people that are involved with music or or into music or or play uh, or or they're actors or painters or you know yeah. people sometimes you know want to want to dead in certain things some things are too hard to feel but i would say try to figure out a way to do it you know without <laughs> without too much to you know jack daniels or too much uh, anything else you know totally man how is it in new york have you uh, is it opening up at all or no very slowly like i yeah. actually may have a gig at this place that i play at a little tiny place called the 55 bar i might actually do a gig there on monday and wednesday for the first time in over a year wow so and i play there every time i'm in town for two, two nights for 35 years i've been playing yeah. you know, whenever you know whenever i wasn't on the road so uh and it may be so we just got asked yesterday actually to play there so it's just certain things are opening up slowly slowly so we'll see make sure you wash your hands Yes, I'm doing plenty of that. <laughs> and I'm clean. My hands are clean as hell. Yeah. Well, Mike, thank you for your time. I know you're in a rush and you've got things on your... Uh, you're, it's midnight almost uh, in New York, so... It's midnight. Uh, I, I, thanks, man. You look great, by the way, behind your you. microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sure, but you look even better behind the soundboard. <laughs> So I, I'm praying we get to work together again. Oh, I hope so, mate. Take care. Voodoo strikes. It'll tear apart your head when voodoo strikes. You wish that you was dead when voodoo strikes. It'll tear apart your head.